Hey everybody, in this video, I'm gonna teach you about some basic operations in R that you're gonna to need to know uh, to get into computational social science. So let's begin by opening up R Studio. In a previous video, I explained how to download R Studio, how to download R. Um, I explained what these different panes here mean on the screen here. Um, the code editor, the console, the environment, the working directory. So if you're not familiar with those, you're going to want to go back and watch that old video. Today we're going to start working in the code editor. This pane that in my R is in the upper left-hand side of my R Studio. And last time I showed you how we can do some simple calculations up here in the code editor and get our output in the console. We could do addition, division, multiplication, um, all sorts of just basic math. But one thing we do very often in R is create objects. So an object can mean a lot of different things. It can mean anything from a data set to a group of numbers or, or a vector or a group of words. For now, let's just give uh, our object, let's, let's create an object called my object and I'm using this assignment operator here that I described in a previous video. This operator lets me assign um, whatever's on the right side of it to whatever's on the left side of it. So I can give my object here a value of two, and now you see up in my environment pane, I've created an object, right? I could also give it a value of, um, uh, a string variable or a word here and we'll come back to that in a few minutes but conceptually I just want you to understand um, that this is how you basically create objects in R. Okay so we can obviously in addition to putting a number here we could create objects that become increasingly complex as we you know create more and more complex kind of operations. All right so usually though, when we're working in computational social science, we're working with really large objects. And typically we're gonna work with a data set, and I'm gonna show you a data set in a few minutes. But first I want you to understand a little bit about the parts that go into making a data set so you can learn how to navigate a data set more effectively. So data sets are really just combinations of vectors. What are vectors? Vectors are just <clears throat> a list or a sequence of things. So here we can create a vector as follows. Um, you'll see I've given it a name with an underscore here. Um, we can't use spaces when we name objects in R because those are interpreted as meaningful um, by the programming language. So typically, we instead of using spaces, we either use this kind of underscore or we can use something called camel case where we capitalize the first letter in each word. To create a vector in R, we put whatever we want to be in the vector in between C and then parentheses, just like this. So I'm gonna create a very simple ve vector here. One, two, three. Each element or part of the vector is separated by a comma here. Now you can see I've created a vector in my environment pane called my vector. Now, this is a numeric vector. It consists of numbers but vectors could also exist from uh, words or what we often call characters or strings. Um, so here's another example. I'll create a, just a quick string vector here. This is a vector. And there you see it up in the environment pane again. Okay. so. Why do we wanna do this? Well, usually we're not just creating single vectors like this, usually we're reading in massive vectors or large vectors, right? We wanna do some kind of operation on them. So for example, suppose we wanted to know what the average value in our vector here called my vector is, we could use a function. So in R, when you apply a function, usually uh, you usually apply it to uh, all sorts of different objects, but for now, let's think about applying it to a vector here. I'm gonna use the mean function. You'll notice RStudio has helped me with predictive text here. It has showed me that there's a function called mean, which is gonna take the mean of my vector, 
And if I wanted to, I could come in here and press F1 to get a help file. The help files give examples of what goes into the code uh, to make this function work, um, and then some examples of it applied. Um, sometimes those can be more useful than others. In an earlier video, um, I described how open source software is really only as good as the people who make it, and those people don't always have incentives to make it really, really usable, right? They're not trying to sell a product. So, um, so sometimes the help documentation will be better or worse, depending on the function. Now, if it's something really broadly used, like the mean function here, it's gonna be pretty well um, documented. So I'll go ahead and calculate the mean of my vector here, which the console has just told us is two. Okay, so we could have done any, we could have you know, calculated um, all sorts of stuff about my vector, right? Let's take a minute and make some mistakes. Let's try to calculate the mean of my string vector. Now, as you notice that I started typing that out, you'll notice once I've created an object in my environment pane, it comes up through predictive text in R. Now, that might not seem super useful until you begin to realize how critical typos can be. So if I accidentally hit like a, a one instead of an L and a one really looks like an L, it's really kind of hard to see, particularly if you've got tons of lines of code. And so letting the predictive text do the work for you by pressing enter when you see it here is kind of a handy thing to do. Okay, so let's try to calculate the mean value of my string vector. Here we get a warning message, our first warning message here down in the console. Warning message, in mean.default, my string vector argument is not numeric or logical returning NA. So this is a kind of a cryptic error message and it's actually unfortunately very typical of R, right? Uh, what I would like this error message to say is you can't calculate the mean of words, right? That would be a reasonable, uh, easy to interpret um, uh, error message. What R is telling us instead is saying that um, the argument is non-numeric or, or logical, meaning true or false. And so here it's given us this NA value and it's actually done the calculation or tried to do the calculation, but it's produced NA or a missing data kind of value. So um, this is just to show you that you can't apply any function to any type of object. Sometimes the object has to match the purpose of the, of the, um, of the function here. And this is a kind of a key difference between string variables and numeric variables. And um, as you come up here, you can see every time we have a numeric variable, we're enclosing it, uh, sorry, a string variable, we are enclosing it in quotes. And that tells R, this is a string variable, um, not a numeric variable. Okay, so um, we've gone over kind of basic operations, how to create an object, how to use the assignment operator, that, that caret sign with the dash after it, creating vectors using C, open, close parentheses. We just applied our first function to that vector, the, the mean function. And then we've also briefly gone over how to name variables and the difference between string variables and numeric variables. Now I just wanna show you a few more things uh, to help you get some kind of really basic skills that will help you follow the videos that, are, that, that follow. So the first thing we often need to do when we're writing code is we need to kind of remind ourselves what we did. Um, there, there could be a few reasons for that. For now, if you're new, you're probably just gonna wanna write notes to yourself, but eventually you might wanna annotate or make comments in your code for other people too. When you go to share your, your code or suppose you wanted to publish an analysis and then you wanted other people to know what you're doing. Anytime you want R to create a comment, um, you can use the hashtag and say, this is a comment. Now, if I try to run this line by putting my cursor on that line and I'm pressing control enter, the uh, uh, command enter, the uh, shortcut here, you'll see nothing's happening, right? As opposed to here, when I uh, run a line that's not commented out, meaning having this hashtag in front of the text here. So this can be really useful um, to make notes to yourself don't confuse numeric and string vectors or whatever you want to remember. Okay, the next thing you often want to do when you're dealing with vectors is something called indexing a vector. That just means pulling out one value from the vector. So for example, we have our vector, my vector here. That's the one that's just one, two, three. Got our predictive text again. 
And let's say I want to just grab the second value from that vector. So we have one, two, three, so the second value is two. So if I put in two here, then you'll see it's indexed one. And if I put in one, it's gonna give me one. And if I put in three, it's gonna give me three, right? So what I'm doing now is indexing a vector. And sometimes I need to pull out just one little bit of information from a really big, big part of, uh, piece of uh, data set or a big vector or whatever. And so um, this is how you do it if it's a vector. Okay. Now, I, was, I said at the beginning of this video that very often we're working with a data set, or in R it's called a data frame, uh, instead of a vector. Um, we might still create vectors in various situations, but in, in many cases, and in the next few videos, we're gonna be working with data frames. So let's take a look at a data frame. I've got one on my desktop here. This is actually a data frame that contains tweets that I pulled from Twitter that are about the coronavirus. Now you may notice that the icon here is uh, not our studio. It has an R here, but it's actually gonna open in R uh, and not our studio. Remember that you installed two different programs when you installed R and R studio. So I need to come over here as I did in the first video when we created our first .r script and I need to change the default program to open this uh, type of file with uh, to be RStudio, and I'm just gonna go ahead and hit change all. Okay, now you'll see the kind of icon changed here. And now when I double click on this icon, um, RStudio is asking me, do you wanna load this um, data set into your working session? I'm gonna say yes. And now up here you can see we have a data frame. What does a data frame look like? Well, here it's got a name. It says it has 64 observations. That means 64 rows. And then it has six variables. So it has 64 rows and six columns. Now, if you wanna look at your um, data frame, you can simply click on it here in the environment pane. And we can see some of the stuff in this data set. So we can see um, there's a tweet here, surprise study confirms you're unlikely to spread coronavirus, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you, whatever, we can't read the whole thing here. Um, this is from a Twitter user named Tom Fitton, and he posted it at this time and date, and it got this many favorites and this many retweets. And we can browse the data a little bit here. Um, we could, for example, if we wanna come over here and see which of our tweets got the most retweets, we could come up here and hit this little arrow and that sorts it from minimum to maximum. And so the most popular, the most shared tweet in this small little data set was by Aubrey Huff here. Okay, so we can also obviously scroll down through the data set um, and, um, and check it out this way. But particularly when we get into bigger data sets, we wanna use more powerful functions in R to make sense of them, or maybe visualizations um, to make sense of them. And so in future videos, we'll go over that. Before we do that though, I wanna kind of show you how to work with a data frame a little bit. So we've already opened it um, and we opened it by double clicking. We could have also used the load command here. So let's say I wanted to remember what I was doing uh, later. I could um, load it like this. And here what you're seeing is the file path. So um, what I'm writing here is the location on my computer where that file is, is, is living right now. Remember in the first video, I introduced the concept of the working directory. That's the place on your computer that by default, um, R is going to load in um, files or save files. So currently on this machine, the home folder is the working directory and the coronavirus tweets um, data frame is on my desktop. So I need to specify exactly where it is on my computer using this thing called a file path, which just simply gives a list of which folder within which folder within which folder within which folder the file I'm looking for lives. And again, if I go to save this later, if I wanted to change this data set and make it into something else and then save it again, it would get saved to my um, working directory. If I wanna change my working directory, suppose I wanted to change my working directory from the home folder to the desktop, um, R has a function for that. I can write set WD here, and then I can type within uh, parentheses here, uh, within uh, quotes here, 
to uh, make the desktop my default location. The desktop's a little dangerous to do because if you suddenly started downloading, say, thousands of files, your desktop could get pretty messy, so you may not want to use your desktop. But I just wanted you to get a sense of how uh, working directories become important again. OK, so suppose we wanted to look at just the first tweet in this data frame. We just wanted to look at what it said. Well, the first thing we'd want to do is we want to know the name of the data frame. This one is called COVID underscore tweets. And then there's a variable here called tweet underscore text. So in order to show part of a data frame, or one variable in a data frame, we simply write the name of the data frame, and then this dollar sign, which is sometimes called the atomic operator in R. And then we simply put the name of the variable we want to look at. Now, you'll notice as I, after I typed that dollar sign, I have the option to choose any of the variables on here. Um, and that's kind of a handy predictive text feature in RStudio as well. So if I run this whole line, I'm going to see in my console all of the different tweets. So there's 64 of them, and that's not very useful. Suppose I just want to look at the first tweet. Well, earlier I showed you how to index a vector, right, by using these kind of square brackets here. So if I put, say, let's, see, let's say we want to look at the third tweet in this data set. If I put a 3 here, then we're just going to get the third tweet in the uh, data frame here. All right. So data frames, in the end, are really just a combination of vectors. They also include another type of data object called a list. We're not going to go over lists for now. They're a little bit more difficult to work with. But just so you know what they are, a list is kind of like a vector, except instead of being able to contain just one type of, in of information, like either a number or, or some words, it can contain many different types of things. And that makes it kind of, so it could have, it could have uh, some string variables, it could have some numeric variables, it could even have a data, fr data frame or data set inside the list. So lists are just another type of array, another type way of keeping things organized, but they're a little trickier to work with, and they won't come up until we get into some more advanced content. So that's it for now. I'll see you in the next video.